there were just kangaroo carcasses every morning, everywhere. One of our biggest challenges going into this year's round the world trip uh, is a section in Australia called the Nullarbor, the Nullarbor Desert. And it's basically between Adelaide and Perth, so the southwest corner of Australia. And if you don't know, a lot of Australia is empty. I mean, it's a big, big place, often underestimated by how big it is, but as I say, very unpopulated. And so you have this kind of 1,500 to 2,000 mile stretch between these two relatively big cities, um, which is just empty. And nullable actually means no tree uh, in native Australian. I'm probably misquoting that. But anyway, it means no tree in some language. It's based on the fact that yeah, there's just nothing there. And in all of our research uh, ahead of the trip, you would hear these warnings from these Australians. Oh, you got to be careful, mate. You don't want to cross that desert. You will die. And, you know, things you need to get water, enough for six months worth of water. There's nowhere to stay. Petrol runs out. There's fires. All of this sort of, you know, really terrifying information. So my first question was, could we actually do it in the 911 Carrera T that we're using for the trip? And everyone I spoke to said, no, you know, you've really got to have a proper off-roading SUV or, or an RV or something. And so we spoke about putting the 911 on a trailer or maybe getting some spare tires and strapping them to the roof. Long story short, we decided, look, this year is about adventure. And also I'm documenting it all for YouTube. And if I spend the entire year staying in very plush hotels and driving my 911 around, people are going to be like, come on, you're not really driving the world. And so I somehow managed to convince my girlfriend, who's doing the entire trip with me, that we were going to do this as kind of like our, you know, moment of finding ourselves, you know, as our year of travel. Here we go into the desert. So we stocked up uh, whilst in Adelaide, went to the supermarket, bought all these kind of survival camping gear items, window shades, sleeping bags, ice boxes. You know, we really thought we were going out there into the outback and we were either gonna get murdered, raped by a kangaroo, or just like die of starvation and dehydration. Turned out not to be that way. <laughs> Turned out to be the greatest adventure that we have had, I think uh, arguably in our lives, but at least within the car life that I now live. It's a beautiful place. It is an abandoned place. There's very little accommodation. Uh, you know, most people I think camp. Every 200 miles you have something called a roadhouse. Uh, now, the roadhouse is somewhere for truckers to stay overnight. They don't really have what you would call doors. Uh, and there's a lot of wildlife in Australia and especially in the desert. So snakes, spiders, kangaroos uh, tend to just walk in and out of people's rooms uh, as you're in them, which can be slightly unnerving. But we ended up doing the crossing in about four days. And the hardest thing I found about driving in Australia are the kangaroos or the roos. Because... Everyone will tell you, whether you're from Australia or not, that the kangaroos will jump into your car and punch you in the face and kill you. I mean, like, the warnings that you get are so terrifying about these damn kangaroos. They'll say, do not drive at night, do not drive at dawn, and do not drive at dusk, because a kangaroo will eat your face. And so <laughs> I had this clock in my head that was 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You don't drive after that, uh, or before that. And so every day we were sort of racing against the sunset. And the minute that dusk approached, I would become like this sort of crazy person where my eyes were so transfixed on the road and everything around that they were about three foot in front of my face. I had the additional sort of rally spotlights up front. I'd put them on even when in the daylight and I wouldn't speak. And my poor girlfriend would be there saying, oh, you know, should we change the music? I'd be like, oh, stop, stop, stop talking to me. The rules are coming. And so apart from these kind of like terrifying periods in the morning and in the evening of, you know, impending rue death, it ended up being the most beautiful experience we've had because you're just alone. You're alone in this amazing scenery. You've got cliffs that fall 300 foot down to the sea. You've got whale watching spots. You've got incredible photo opportunities. These kind of signs that you could only see in Australia, you know, the next 200 kilometers, wallabies, kangaroos, and God knows what else. The only close call we actually had with a kangaroo uh, was kind of like separate to the, the trip almost. We'd stopped off at our overnight stop, which I really liked. My government wasn't so keen on, but I thought it was a lovely place place and there was a sort of back road that you could take to go down to the beach and the Australians were like ah it's like a hundred meters you'll be fine it's beautiful 
So we go down there and I'm flying the drone, tracking us as we go on this off-road section because I always think it's quite cool to see a 911 off-road. So I'm filming us and I'm just looking down at the screen and as I look up, alongside like four kangaroos, like running alongside the car. <laughs> so my girlfriend's like, oh my God, look, it's beautiful. I freak out because here is the impending death that everyone's told me about. Like, okay, they're running alongside the car, but clearly they're about to run into it. So I like throw the drone controller over my thing. I like grab the wheel, like slam on the brakes. Uh, luckily, they were just minding their own business, didn't come anywhere near the car. And to be fair, that was only our, our only real close call. You do unfortunately see a lot of, I think, uh, accidents that do happen why Australians are so scared because when you leave in the morning the road is littered with carcasses which is quite horrific to see um, and you also get a real sense to how big kangaroos are and why they cause so much damage if they hit your car because yeah every single morning didn't matter where we were Sydney or the desert there were just kangaroo carcasses every morning everywhere. So yeah, luckily our only close call was during our romantic drive down to the beach. Um, the rest of the time we didn't really see any, which is why I couldn't understand why the Australians were so terrified. But based on the carcasses, I get it. They must hit quite a few. They have the longest stretch of straight road in Australia, 150 kilometer long straight road, I think, which apparently is heavily watched by police. So, you know, we had to kind of think about that slightly, but, uh, and actually the only speed ticket, we, speed ticket we got in the entire time in Australia was in the desert. I mean, I don't know how that happened. We were the only people there for three days, but somehow the one moment we went 20 kilometers over the speed limit, being ticketed by an Australian Outback cop was definitely interesting. I think he was most baffled with the fact that it's a UK registered car in his country. I really don't think that happens very often. So the initial sort of uh, complaint was that we were going a little bit too fast, which we of course apologized for. He then said, well, you know, where's this car registered to? And Australia has states similar to America. And, you know, they really don't know about each other's states. So, you know, you can be in New South Wales and they really don't know what happens in another state. So he didn't know whether it was just a number plate or a registration plate from one of the other states. Uh, so I explained, no, it's, it's over here from the UK and presented with a whole lot of paperwork. At this point, I was feeling a bit cocky because, you know, I got a great logistics and shipping partner for the entire trip. They handle everything. And so I just give them the piece of paper. I said, there you go, check the paperwork, officer. You'll see the things are fine. And he sits there and he reads it and he goes, well, there's nothing in here at all which talks about the registration of the car. And I was like, sorry? He goes, yeah, it's just, this, is, this is just talking about the import. I was like, okay, let me just check. What I realized was that I actually was supposed to register the car as a temporary import in each state. Well, at least some states were more strict on it. Some of the early states didn't care. So when I collected the car on the opposite side of Australia, there you don't need to do anything. You just have the documentation, which I had, and you're totally fine. But in this particular state, I was supposed to have a sort of temporary, it's like a $5 thing on the online. You just type it in, off you go. So I then had to go my ultimate like Hugh Grant impression, as polite as I could go, name drop Prince Harry like four times. And just, I, I know for sure that I have done this. I wouldn't, my sponsor would not allow me to be here without this information. <laughs> to which point the cop couldn't quite decide whether I was telling the truth or not. So he went and, and went back into his, uh, into his patrol car, sat there for about 30 minutes, I think just making a sweat, but also looking confused, just turning over pieces of paper. And eventually came back and decided he confused himself so much that he just said, well, look, I'm gonna give you a warning. I don't really know what else to do, but I feel like you should be registered anyway, off you go. And so, and so we just drove off. So, you know, I don't think I can ever revisit the sort of near Adelaide area of Australia with my 911, but I don't plan to. So uh, at that point, we felt a bit like outlaws and, and cracked on, but yeah, he was definitely, definitely baffled, as was I apparently. The most disappointing thing about this year's trip is that the 911 has just been so good. Like at no point, has it really like had an issue to traverse any kind of, you know, road, off-road, hill, mountain. It's just been faultless. And I think there was a part of me as a cynical YouTuber that was kind of hoping it would go wrong at times, but it just hasn't. And so uh, we did find out that we ended up crossing that desert with two nails in our tire, but it didn't even explode. So I'm like, come on guys. So yeah, it, it hasn't really had any of those moments of us getting uh, trapped anywhere, it's just been bulletproof. So from that point of view, 
it's great and it's made life easier. But from a content creator point of view and on the uh, horrible platform that is YouTube, uh, you kind of wish every now and again that you'd be like, oh, we got stuck in Syria or whatever. But it just hasn't happened. So. Whether you're packing for a cannonball or just going about your day, it's important to just carry what you actually need. The Ridge has a line of wallets and bags that help you to do just that. Leave the junk at home and just make sure that you've always got exactly what you need with you. So be sure to check out ridge.com slash Venwiki and use the code Venwiki at checkout for a discount to let them know how much you appreciate their support of the Venwiki channel.